I woke up to a slow, rhythmic sound. Tu wu u, tu tu wu u, tu tu wu u. Where am I? What is this smell? The smell of disinfectant filled my nostrils. My mouth was dry. How long have I been here? I tried my best to open my eyes, but it was too bright. Groaning, I immediately closed them and focused on breathing. I couldn't move, and every breath I took felt like a knife piercing my side. I slowly became aware of pain everywhere, as if a veil was being lifted from me. He woke up. Who was that? Mr. Davis, can you hear me? I nodded, or so I thought. Mr. Davis, you are in the hospital. You were brought in last night. The doctor will come to talk to you as soon as he is free. Just try to relax and not move more than you need to. I tried to raise my hand and, oh damn, it hurt. What the hell did they do to my hand? The pain goes all the way to the shoulder. The stabbing pain makes me breathe even harder and that knife passes through me again. What the hell is going on? I decided to lie still and just try to breathe slowly and shallowly. She must have gone away and eventually I tried to open my eyes again. The vision in my left eye was blurry and I couldn't see anything in my right eye. I think a nurse walked by so that confirmed what they told me. Another glance in my direction. She must have noticed me licking my lips because she offered me a straw and I took a sip. Oh yes, so good. I don't know how much time has passed. I tried to avoid anything that hurt me, but since it involved breathing I didn't have much success. A white coat is moving in my direction. Mr. Davis, I'm Dr. Petal. An ambulance brought you last night. How are you feeling? How the hell do you think I feel, you... At least that's what I was trying to say. Don't try to talk, Mr. Davis. Your nose is broken, and there is a crack on your cheekbone along the hairline. What the heck? He asks me a question and then tells me to keep quiet. Last night, you were in the operating room for four hours as we tried to repair your right knee. You also have three broken ribs on your right side and a compound fracture of your right forearm. Eye? Yes, your right eye is swollen and swollen, but the damage is superficial. The swelling will subside in a few days. In fact, you had a slight concussion when you were brought in, so we want you to be completely at rest for a while. You will remain here until we are sure that you are on the mend. How? Sorry, Mr. Davis. I shouldn't answer this question. When you are ready, the police will talk to you. At the same time, they don't want us to distort your answers. The nurses will take care of you. In the meantime, I suggest you just relax a little. You are still in the post-op room, but you will soon be moved to a ward. And then he left. What was it? What the hell happened to me? I drank and hung out with friends. I danced with... Oh yes, Karen. The memory was returning to me. I was dancing with Karen, my old high school girlfriend. She rubbed herself against my leg and rubbed herself against me. My God, she was even sexier than when we were in school. Some guy kept trying to intervene. Who was that? It does not matter. She kept laughing at him and telling him to let her have a little fun for once. Oh yes, now I remember. This weakling was her husband. They moved me to a double room and I got some sleep. I wanted them to put me to sleep for a week, but they refused. They said something about a concussion. Could it get any worse? I don't think I slept for long, but it's impossible to say for sure. Time passed slowly when I was awake, and I measured it with my breaths. Small, shallow breaths cause less pain. My throat was dry. Where's the nurse? It was painful even to swallow. Who are these people making all this noise? They must be visiting the guy in the other bed. Could they please just shut the hell up? Breathe calmly? Take shallow breaths? Just try to relax. Where are my visitors? Where is my wife? She should be here. I didn't see my parents or my sister's family. Do they even know I'm here? Mr. Davis? I opened my one good eye. He looks down at me. Cheap brown suit. Notebook. Must be a cop. I nod. Mr. Davis, I'm Detective George Abbott. I've been assigned to your case. What can you tell me about last night? I'm trying to explain. I was attacked. I was minding my own business. I'm very sorry, Mr. Davis. I can't understand what you're talking about. 
Detective, he's not ready. The swelling makes it difficult for him to speak, and the painkillers make him dizzy. You must return tomorrow. Thank you, Sister Mr. Davis. I'll be back when you're ready to talk. The suit turned and left. What the f- I'm ready. Find this guy. My side hurts again, and the pain in my leg has started to throb. Sister! Sister! My leg! Mr. Davis, does your leg hurt? Your pain medication is probably wearing off. I'll bring you something. She comes back with two pills, water, and a straw. Just lie there and try to calm down. Don't move more than you need to. Tomorrow you will feel better. She left before I could ask her where my wife was. I slept fitfully that night, and the next day they put me on my feet with a walker. That's what they're doing now. When you have knee surgery, they want you to get up and walk right away. I walked to the far end of the hall and back. Then they put ice on my knee, and four hours later, they made me do it again. I take oxycodone as soon as it's given to me, and take ibuprofen and acetaminophen in between like it's a tic-tac. I'm lying in my bed when the suit comes back. Mr. Davis, perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Detective George Abbott, and I'm here to talk to you about what happened. He paused for a moment as I nodded and then continued. How much do you remember? I shrugged. I remember that evening and how I left the party. I was walking through the parking lot when I was hit from behind. I vaguely remember falling, but that's all. Do you remember what happened before this? This was our 10th high school reunion. I came from Chicago, where I currently live. It was a riot. The committee decorated the gym and we finally got all those drinks we couldn't get when we were in school there. I thought it would get him, but Detective Abbott didn't even smile. I met with my friends, with some of their wives, everything as usual. My ex-girlfriend Karen was there with her weakling husband. She ran up as soon as she saw me and dragged me to the dance floor. Damn, she was even sexier than when we were in school. One song and it was like we were back in school. She disappeared into me, as she always had. I mean, damn, she's always been a cold-blooded fox. But that night she got out of control. Okay, I was bragging a little, but it was true and I was just getting to the good stuff. Do you remember anything else? Her weakling husband kept trying to intervene and she kept laughing at him. At one point she said, just go away and let me have some fun. Damn, she might be cold, but to me she was hot. We found a table, grabbed a few drinks, and chatted. She continued to stroke my leg under the table until hubby finally pulled her back to their table. It didn't last long, and either she came to me or I went to her. I took her away from her husband's table three or four times. One more round on the dance floor and everything was decided. I ran to the men's room and ducked down the stairs into the men's locker room. Five minutes later, she joined me. Damn, she was hot in school, but that night she was on fire. She screamed like a wild woman, and with all the tiles on the floor and walls, it's a wonder they didn't hear us upstairs. Just when I thought we were done, she started up again. We finally slipped out of the locker room and went upstairs separately. The high school reunion was ending, so I headed to my car. At some point, as I was crossing the parking lot, I was hit from behind. I remember hitting the ground, but that's all I remember. And then I woke up here. I looked past the detective and noticed a nurse standing not far from him. She seemed to be listening. I don't think she has her own personal life. Who cares? Detective Abbott nodded and took a few notes, but I got the feeling he wasn't taking this seriously. Do you want to add anything? No, that's all I remember. Then, it's okay. I have your application. I will contact you in a few days if I need anything else. And that's all? Could you at least tell me something about what happened to me? Well, we don't have many leads. Apparently there were some people in the parking lot, but no one admits to having seen anything. What? Nobody? What about my friends? As far as we can tell, Mr. Davis, no one wants to admit that he is your friend. Some people admit that they saw you at the high school reunion, but no one saw you leave, and no one saw the attack. This is madness. There must have been at least 20 people in the parking lot. What can I say, Mr. Davis? No one admits to having seen anything. Well, what do you think happened? Off the record, we think Karen Jefferson's husband, Bill, kicked your ass. This weakling? He may be a weakling, 
but he walks, and you don't. It doesn't seem to bother you too much. A crime has been committed. That's what it used to be. What does it mean? It used to be a crime to have sex with another man's wife. But that law was repealed many years ago. Now this is just a disgusting thing that no decent person with an iota of self-respect would even think of doing. I looked into his eyes. He didn't even try to hide his disgust. Fine, I understand. You're going to pretend like this never happened. Not at all, Mr. Davis. If anyone comes forward with new evidence, we will definitely consider it. Right now, it looks like another unsolved attack. There are a lot of these when it comes to drinking. What if I press charges? You can do it, but without proof, it probably won't get you anywhere. Even if that's the case, you should know that the jury here doesn't take kindly to men who have other people's wives. There's a good chance that even with the evidence, you won't get a verdict you like. So you're not going to do anything. There's nothing more to do here. Detective Abbott turned and left the room. Typical cop. Where the hell is my family? Where are my friends? Why didn't my friends tell the police what they saw? Damn, I hated this prudish city growing up, and I can't wait to go back to Chicago. The nurse who overheard my conversation with the detective is still in the room. Sister, do you have a minute? She looks annoyed, but comes towards me. Has my wife been notified that I'm here? Yes, Mr. Davis. She was contacted when you were brought in. She was here when you were wheeled out of the operating room with your parents. How come I didn't see them? Were they rejected for some reason? No, they were talking to some of your friends when you were taken out of the operating room, and then they left. With these words, she simply turned and left the room. They are gone? Did they just leave me here? At the next opportunity, I called another nurse. Sorry, but I had a mobile phone when I arrived here. Do you know where he is? It should be with the clothes you were wearing. She opens the closet and takes out a plastic bag with a drawstring. Here it is. With these words, she hands me my phone and leaves. Phone discharged. After lunch, they take me to rehab. They make me walk back and forth and tell me it's good for my recovery. The pain in my knee is indescribable. During therapy, they make me bend my knee. They are working to get it to at least a 90-degree turn. I'm already about 45 and I want to scream in pain. The therapist tells me, Without pain there is no gain, but all I want to do is rip his head off. When the rehab session ends, they take me back to my room. They probably decided that they had tormented me enough and fed me lunch. Nobody comes here for food. While I'm lying there eating jelly, my sister comes into the room. Finally, I have a visitor. Little sister, how glad I am to see you. Where is everyone? Does anyone else know I'm here? She doesn't answer me. How are you doing? Shit. I have a broken knee, a broken arm, three broken ribs, and a smashed face. I see it. What did you do that got you into this state? Nothing. I was just walking to my car after a high school reunion. She ignores my answer. Mom and Dad were worried about you. Why aren't they here? The nurse told me that they were here when I was taken out of the operating room, but then they left. We were all here. Why did you all leave? Damn, I've been here for almost 24 hours and haven't seen a single friendly face since I got here. She ignores what I said and seems to just look around the room. At least you're here. I'm really glad you're here. I drew a short straw. What? I was with my mom and dad, along with Janet, her parents, and her brother. Is Janet here? My wife is visiting from Chicago, but isn't she worried about seeing how I'm doing? Bill and his parents were here too. Bill? Who is Bill? And then it comes to me. The detective said Karen's husband's name was Bill. Bill Jefferson, I think you met him last night. Why did Jefferson meet with my parents? When will mom and dad come? I don't know if they will come. Like I said, I drew the short straw. What is this supposed to mean? That means we're not at all proud of you right now, little brother. You have disgraced your family. Disgraced? I was attacked from behind. I didn't even have a chance to defend myself. My sister leaned closer to my ear and said in a whisper, You fucked another man's wife, you vile piece of shit. Do you think mom and dad are proud of you now? Do you think they want to show up at church next Sunday? 
Do you know what it was like for them to come face to face with Bill and his family and admit that they had raised a sneaky coward who was sneaking around behind another man's back and having his wife? It wasn't my fault. She wanted this. A man cannot resist such pressure. By this time, she had straightened up again. She looked me in the eyes and said, You are not just a man. You are a married man. And don't tell me all this nonsense about you being a victim. Everyone at the high school reunion is talking about how you followed her. Oh, she wanted it. It wasn't just me. Pig. So what if she wanted it? You could show at least some character and not embarrass the whole family. I wasn't going to win this argument today, and I needed someone to help me. Okay, maybe I could have behaved better, but now it's all water under the bridge. Nothing. When will Janet come? Does she know? How angry is she? Well, she had a long talk with Bill and some of your former classmates, so take a guess. How did they know? My sister shook her head. Oh, I don't know. Let's watch. Karen was screaming in the tiled room just below the dance floor, screaming as if someone was being killed. Several men ran into the basement, followed by several women, and everyone saw the two of you committing adultery like animals. Did you know that there is video from a phone? From several phones? Do you know what it was like for your wife to watch those videos? Do you think our parents liked it? Do you think Janet's parents liked it? You screwed up big time, little brother, and you're not getting out of it this time. I'll tell everyone that you're fine. And with that, my older sister, who looked after me when I was little and protected me on the playground when the big kids bullied me, turned and walked out of the room, leaving me alone. The day passes, and I spend it with a bag of ice on my knee, popping painkillers. I can't even take a shit without calling a nurse to help me get there. I have another walk down the hall and back, and I eat dinner that wouldn't pass for food even in a nursery. All this time I'm trying to figure out what I'll say to Janet. These videos will be difficult to refute. Eventually I fell asleep. The next day the nurse tells me that I will be going home and that I will need help for a few weeks while I continue physical therapy. I ask the nurse to call my parents. They will have to accept me, no matter how upset they are. Another walk down the hall, a round of therapy, a big bag of ice and a few pills, and I'm ready to go. The nurse tells me that my parents are waiting for me downstairs, and I breathe a sigh of relief. My relief was premature. When I arrived at the hospital doors, I was glad to see that they were waiting for me. Everyone was there, including my parents, my sister, and even my wife and her family. I was forgiven. Once again, my relief was premature. My loving wife walked up to my wheelchair, reached behind me, and then hit me in the face with everything she had. You bastard, she shouted, and then turned and walked out the door, followed by her parents. My mother walked up to me, and I cringed. You're still my son, and I love you, but I'm not ready to see you yet. We agreed that you would go to rehab until you were able to function on your own. Maybe by then we'll be ready to talk to you. My father simply said, don't count on it. And they both walked to their car. My wife's brother came up to me and said, you know what I do for a living, right? I said, yes, you are a lawyer. He threw a thick envelope into my lap and said, you've been served. The package contains a petition for divorce and a court order to stay away from your home, your wife, and your children until the case is resolved. By the time I looked up from the envelope in my lap, it too had disappeared. Little sister, what's going on? Remember I told you that I drew the short straw? Now do you understand what this means? Nobody wanted to come and see how you were doing. We drew lots, and I lost. With these words, she turned and left. I thought that was it but then I noticed another one leaning against the wall. If there was anger and sadness in my family's eyes, there was hatred and rage in his eyes. Hi, Bill. I assume you've come for your piece of flesh? He straightened up, took a few slow steps towards the door, turned and said, Get ready, Davis. I planned to take it in parts. Then he disappeared. I thought there were times in my life when I was alone, but until that moment, I didn't know what loneliness really felt like. Everyone who I thought cared about me turned their backs, all because of sex. What the hell was the matter? The weakling was furious. I understand it. 
but why my own family? I took a taxi to the rehab center and settled in for two weeks of daily torture. They'll let me go when I can climb the stairs. During all this time, not a single person came to me except my lawyer, and I paid him extra for this. I tried to call Karen, but she didn't answer my calls. I later learned that she was struggling with her own divorce. My arm, ribs, and knee, not to mention my face, told me that Bill was not one to forgive. I'll give her some time. Maybe she'll come to her senses. When I returned to Chicago, I discovered that I still had a job, but I needed to find an apartment. The divorce was quick. It appears that although no one saw me being attacked in the parking lot, everyone lined up to testify about what they saw in the locker room. That's the whole story about my alumni meeting. I doubt anyone will forget about this anytime soon. I know that I won't forget.